Hello, this is Bud Rich. This video I will talk about how uh, I uh, develop i3s scripts uh, and we will focus on i3 whiz uh, or this whiz i3 this whiz difficult to say great to use <laughs> um, the reason i want to do this or one reason i want to do this at least is that i uh, recently got uh, uh, an uh, issue here uh, on the i3s issue tracker uh, where someone wanted me to comment the code for i3 this with a little bit better, make it easier to understand. And uh, I intend to do so. I, I am actually working on an update on the whole i3s uh, uh, script collection here. Uh, and I will um, focus on i3 this with and uh, i3 menu is my intention. I have already started here, here with uh, the this with uh, work and hopefully I can uh, keep my plan here and release this update in yeah a week from from now on the 20th uh, of April um, but I thought that this can actually be a good video maybe maybe not I don't know uh, but I'm recording it now uh, so and I also wanted to make this video because even if I would comment the code better, it will still be very difficult to figure out exactly what's going on in, in this script, I guess, because it's a weird uh, script, which kind of makes it maybe interesting to see uh, how it works. I'm not saying that it is good. Uh, if I knew what I know now, I would have written this in a completely different way, uh, in a completely different language. But I didn't know what I know now when I started writing this and I just has kept kept on uh, keeping it so to speak and, and also I have gotten it working pretty good actually uh, even if it is written in a weird way with the wrong language so to speak I have it, it works so why why uh, uh, fix something that is not broken uh, but let's uh, peek at this code here. We, we can do that on, on GitHub here first, I thought, uh, in this normal i3s uh, repository, you know. Maybe this is where uh, some people get i3s. I know uh, uh, others install it from AUR. Uh, no matter how you do it, you will uh, get this file here, um, the i3 this with bash script. All of these are bash scripts, by the way. Uh, and commands that will be installed to your path, uh, so you can just execute i3 this with to execute this command. You could even do it here on the command line. This with there, nothing happens. It just say not valid direction. In in my case here, um, this is actually part of the update. It will say something. Uh, you will get a slightly different error message. Whatever, if you would use the current version available on GitHub. Uh, Okay, starting from the top. I'm not sure if this will be a top to bottom uh, kind of thing where we go through each line, or I know that it will not, but uh, let's start here. We can see it's a bash script. We got some functions. We got a function called print version. Super simple function, just prints out some version information here. And that is what happens if you, yeah, long option version. You see, you get that thing here. Here we can see that it is, uh, I have bumped uh, the version number here, but uh, not here, whatever. Then we have the main function, uh, where um, that is almost always executed. We get back to all of this. Then we have a print help, and this is, uh, uh, this is just like print version, but this uh, prints uh, the help screen or the help thing, whatever, you know this, the option, uh, it displays all, all available options and so on, and a synopsis for how you can use the command line options and the command itself. Uh, and this is just plain text here, uh, it's a here document. Then we have this weird one, a function called awklib. 
And same thing again here, just uh, a here document that cuts out something that is, and this is actually a uh, awk script. Uh, so th this is a bash function that spits out uh, awk, an awk script. We will, uh, I will walk through uh, the code here and explain that, and it will take quite some time, but I will not do it in this video. I will uh, divide this stuff into maybe two or three videos. In this one, I would just like to show you the structure of, of um, the code and how I work with this, how I organize the files and stuff. You will see soon what I mean. Uh, and now we have this stuff. This is not part of a function, so this will always be executed here in this bash script. Because uh, remember in bash and uh, probably all the programming languages, functions works like this. You, you declare a function uh, and that means it's a block of code that will not get executed until you uh, call that particular function. So nothing has been executed in this script. And bash uh, also reads it from top to bottom. So it looks here, oh, this is just a function and then it just ignores everything here. Uh, and it ignores everything here. It's, it, 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 I guess it registers that this function is available, so to speak, under the hood somehow. And this awk part is the largest part of this script. Uh, and this is where uh, the program uh, actually starts here. It sets uh, capital E, and uh, this is like a bash option uh, to, to um, I think it, it kind of overrides uh, the error uh, 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 signal somehow. I don't even remember how this worked, but this makes it possible for me to, to uh, trap errors uh, in a sane way. It's not really super needed in this particular script, but I just have, have taken this to, to uh, as a thing that I always do. And I will show you how I always do this. It, it is actually done automatically for me. Uh, then I have these four helper functions here, ERX, ERR, ERM, ERH. I think I, I, I borrowed this ID from actually a, a, another YouTuber who, who made a bunch of bash script tutorials he used this e err and erx i believe for printing stuff to a standard error with an error uh, message and if you use x it will also exit the script uh, err that's a warning and then erm that's like a message that isn't it's just not prefixed with anything like a warning or error it's just I mostly use this for uh, debugging. And then I have ERH for error help, and th that would print out the help help screen, calling the help function here. Uh, uh, and then it tests also if I have passed any arguments to this function. If I have, it will also uh, uh, display that string. And that is what's happening here, because if you execute it with this without any arguments, or an invalid direction, for example, cow. That's not a valid direction. And then it will say that cow is not a valid direction. Um, and that is done by calling ERH and then it passes uh, this string here. So those are just helper functions, not really that interesting. Then we have this uh, little function here called list visible, and this is what's uh, initiating the the, the awk script. Uh, we can see here we have the awk command starting awk somehow here, uh, and then it uh, use uh, as the script file. That is what this means in awk. It uses the output of awklib, and that was that uh, function that just printed out uh, 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 an awk script basically. So that might look super weird and awkward. Why don't I just use a separate file if I want to do it like this, but I will get back to uh, my reasoning here uh, later. Then uh, this is done, declaring uh, a global array here, um, an associative array, and that array is called underscore underscore O. Uh, and underscore underscore O is uh, the command line options that are passed to the script. And it is uh, getting populated here in this uh, uh, um, getopt while loop, so to speak here. So it's uh, first it sets up the getopt uh, 
thing here with all the long options and all the short options uh, and stuff like that. And then it parses all the command line options and if there are any command line options it will add it to the correct uh, key in this underscore underscore o array. When that is done it uh, uh, looks to see if there are any last arguments uh, passed to the script. For example here the last argument would be cow and that will be stored in this special variable underscore underscore last arg. And when this is done we execute the main function bringing us back up here to the top uh, and this is where uh, the fun stuff starts but i thought let's let's look at this in in um, a text editor and stuff like that instead um, but as you can see this is a complete script here you don't need any other files for this to run it have everything uh, inside the script itself it have the the help screen there it had the uh, the awk awk script is like baked into to this script file itself uh, and i kind of like that uh, uh, way of distributing uh, scripts uh, making them a single file like this it makes it easy i don't need to know anything about installation paths or anything where where to put those awk files or whatever it is you know uh, and of course you could um, um, download this script and uh, modify it you could change the, the the information here in the print version and write something else if you wanted to and then it would print that whenever you use the uh, dash uh, v option for example uh, and that is one way to work on this just modifying this single script but I don't work on it like that I have a completely uh, a different setup uh, working on this uh, and that setup or thing, it lives here in i3 as dev. It's a separate uh, uh, GitHub uh, user or separate GitHub organization, actually, uh, where I am the only member. Uh, and here you can see that all these i3 as uh, scripts here uh, have their own repository in this uh, i3 as dev uh, organization. And we can, for example, find i3 viswis here. And the repository for viswis on, on the dev uh, uh, um, organization here, it looks like this. I've got a bunch of files. Uh, one file, for example, is called main.sh. And here we can see this file only contains uh, uh, that main function. It's the same main function uh, as we were looking at here, but uh, in its own file uh, and everything uh, in this uh, dev repository is used to generate that uh, uh, i3 viswis file this one this long file it's it's actually a concatenation of uh, a different files some of those files uh, are here for example main and we can see here in the lib directory have we have errsh uh, where the error uh, helper functions uh, live but some of, of the files that are used to concatenate uh, uh, into i3 viswis they actually aren't included here in the repository because they are automatically generated uh, there are a bunch of files here for example awklib uh, program sh uh, the man page init sh all of these are automatically generated and part of that uh, uh, full script so to speak so i would like to like to show you uh, the process of this it, it it actually doesn't take that long to do that uh, try this I, I i think i want to do this if i switch a project here and then i delete that one because i tested this out a bit how, how to demo this uh, remove project this with it's okay remove it and then i guess uh, i guess i should uh, also remove that directory i think i am in that here so rm rf um, this quiz there so we are on the same page so to speak 
Let's clone this uh, dev um, IP with uh, repository. You can follow along here if you want to. Uh, I'm just copying this URL here and then we do a git clone, paste that, and then we can name the target directory. Um, let's call it this, uh, or let's not, let's just call it IP this with whatever. That's a default name. And now I got it here in my TMP directory. In Sublime, I will close the current project and open that directory. Um, and there, now we have a new uh, project here called i 3 this with at least I think so. No, I already had a project. That's why I wanted to, to use a different one. Okay, okay. Let's close this. Let's open that tmp i 3 this with and there. And then I name this project demo. There. Uh, so these are the files. Uh, the auto auto generated files they are generated by uh, a program that's called Bashbud, which I also have made uh, a long time ago. We can see that there is a directory called Bashbud uh, inside the repository here, uh, and that directory contains uh, templates and scripts that is uh, used to generate those auto generated files. Uh, there are two more things that are part of this bashboard uh, thing here uh, and one the most important file is this manifest uh, markdown file here it looks weird if you open it in, in github it looks like this crap here but if we open the, that in the text editor we will see that this part is actually a yaml uh, uh, header thing here uh, and in this manifest md i can write uh, kind of variables. For example, here we have a, a key called description and then I just write here professional window focus for I3WM and then we have updated uh, date here. We have the version, author, whatever. And this is actually just a single variable here, synopsis. It contains yeah the option synopsis here. What we get when we write uh, help, for instance, we can see that synopsis part of it here. There is only one difference. Uh, it is um, that it is prefixed here in the help screen with the script uh, name itself. Um, uh, but then this manifest, it also works like this, that this is also a variable actually. Long description is a variable that Bashboot can use in the, in the templates. Uh, and then everything uh, below that variable is uh, written in markdown and uh, uh, is the content of that variable so it, it's this whole thing here uh, then i also have this manifest dot uh, d directory uh, and that is uh, you, that is not uh, mandatory that you have that uh, working with bash but you could uh, just add whatever is in these files for example uh, um, to the manifest md so so these the content of these files will basically be concatenated uh, with the manifest MD. So it means that this is more uh, um, variables basically. And in opts uh, MD, I have uh, uh, all the documentation for each option here. We can see, uh, let's see if we can find a good one. Um, yeah, for example, options, help, description, show help and exit show version and exit for version description and then we have option win id description and that is this is the description for the option uh, win id the long option win id this one and that, then we can see the text here that is written here which is also markdown you can see the special markdown syntax and stuff here that is not included um, you can find win id there it is so this is the same text as we have here, but you can also see that it have been folded at 50 characters and stuff like that. It's a lot of stuff going into this dashboard and I will not explain exactly how that works. Uh, you can see here we have some wrap. This is the template that generates this help uh, screen thing here. It looks like this. So it is very weird. I, I actually designed more or less my own uh, template language and stuff here. It's super strange in a way, but 
don't worry about that. You don't have to understand any any of that. Uh, it's not impossible to do so, especially since the code is on uh, open source on GitHub. There is a, I think I even wrote a, an extensive wiki on this, uh, mostly for my own sake, so I wouldn't forget how to use this whenever I need to do that. But the thing is, I almost never touch these templates or anything like that. Um, okay, so. Let's navigate to this directory also. Uh, I3 this with. You need to install this program, uh, Bashbud. Uh, if you use Arch, you can find it on AUR. Um, and install that thing. Uh, or you can get it from GitHub. But when it is installed uh, and you are in a directory that contains a, a Bashbud uh, directory, then you can execute the command bashpud long option bump to update this uh, directory. You could see very fast there in Sublime that some files were created and deleted and stuff like that. And now we have those auto generated files here. We have init.sh that was automatically generated. Here we can see that print help and all, all of that stuff. Uh, we have this program sh was also automatically generated. And what this file is, is this is the same thing as we could see on um, GitHub when we look at this, this file, you know, in the normal Bud Labs repository inside SRC, we have all the scripts, I3 VisWiz is one of them. Uh, this file is the same as uh, in the dev version, the automatically generated file program sh. So this is that full script here. Um, <clears throat> when I work on these uh, files, I know I will say this probably a couple of times during these, uh, uh, this i3 this uh, demo thing here, but uh, it's not the best example to show my workflow actually, because the reason for that is that i3 this is mostly uh, written in awk uh, and dashboard uh, and this stuff, it's, it's really for bash and stuff like that. It gets a bit awkward, believe it or not, when you're working with awk and, and you want to keep it uh, organized like I want to keep it in, in separate files like this. Uh, so here we can see the awk program. Uh, and remember this uh, awklib function was just a here document containing uh, an awk script. And as you might have figured out here, uh, this awk script is just the content of the files inside this awklib directory concatenated and, and inserted into this function automatically because this awklib is also automatically generated. Uh, and this is something I just started doing here on the with the last release here that I did. It's almost, it's like nine months ago here. So, but uh, when I did the last release of uh, i3as, I actually removed all the uh, automatically generated files from the uh, git repositories and added them to the git ignore here because uh, it really messed up the commit history and stuff like that. I, I really hope that, that that is a goal for me now to, to get a better, uh, to be better at uh, writing commit messages and making more sense of them because at the moment it's, it's not fun to uh, browse my commit history. Uh, not fun at all. And it should actually be, uh, a, a good experience uh, where you can go back and, and look at uh, how, how a program worked before. But as it is now, I, I, I kind of, I have been adding and committing all files at once and stuff like that. It's, it's a mess and I really want to, to improve that. And I think one way to do that is not including all of these automatically generated files. Because mo many of the files are just like, uh, you can see here, man page, just a documentation thing. So every time I change something, this will, uh, be a changed file and stuff like that because it changed some some stupid version number or something like that. Uh, ah, this beer uh, has seen uh, its better days. Uh, I think I, I need to get a fresh beer. I'll be right back. I pause this recording. All right. Um, so, 
even if I have program sh here, which is, uh, you could ex actually execute the program sh file here. And as you can see, it uh, we get the same same result as if we would execute a uh, 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 i3 this with, and it works with the command line options and everything here. Uh, but what I normally do is uh, instead uh, using the main .sh file here because uh, th that is something I like to do. Instead of uh, program sh, I just execute main sh here, and you can see I get the exact same results. Uh, because what happens when you execute main sh uh, is that you will get this stuff here. First, you have the main function. Remember, a function not executed until we call it. Uh, we set up uh, two variables here, uh, underscore, 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 source, and deed for the uh, path to the file itself. And it also reads the, the, the link of that file. If it's a sim link, it, it figures out where the actual file is. So you get the path to this actual directory where main sh is. Because what I normally do is, uh, is uh, create a sim link. Uh, of this uh, main sh, I do something like this. Uh, Simlink working directory uh, main dot sh to bin home bin, and then I would name it i3 this with. Uh, let's call this i3 this with d for demo or something here. There, now when it is in my path, you see, I can tab complete to it even. Now I can execute that, uh, even if uh, that command now gets executed from the bin directory, this uh, makes it so that uh, it would know that this is the, the, the directory where that the actual file actually lives, whatever. Important here though, is that it will then before executing the main function, it sources uh, this init sh file. And this is, you know, where, where I got all of this stuff, like the print version, print help, and uh, most importantly, the get uh, uh, part here. All of this is automatically generated, and it is, uh, you see, it is like 150 lines of uh, just stuff that I never have to look at, because since it is automatically generated, it is kind of pointless to have it in, in the program. And I never really have to, to look at this file either. It kind of just works. Um, so that is sourced, but the, there is a, another important part here. It's not just these functions and the get ops. Uh, I just realized that this is very critical here, that it also uh, has a for loop uh, looping all the files in the lib directory and sourcing those files. This is only done when you execute main sh. Uh, in, in program sh, this part here is replaced with actual content of, uh, uh, of lib. Kind of. Okay, um, so it sources these files. Uh, and I always try to write it like this. So the, the files in lib, uh, they shouldn't execute any code. They should only be function declarations with some rare exceptions. For example, this uh, ERR uh, 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 file here, which actually have these commands here because they, these will get uh, executed when you source the file. Um, But then, when we have done that, uh, sourced init, uh, meaning we have also sourced everything in lib, then it executes main, uh, and that is the whole program, kind of. So, uh, And what this means is that I can uh, edit stuff here, like for example, we see here now not a valid command uh, line there, it's uh, this line here. So if I would change this, changing, now run i 3 vis with d, then we can see we got our new change here immediately. Um, but it also means that, um, for example, 
uh, I can change uh, the files here in the lib directory without the need to resource anything or anything. Now, uh, since this is a kind of a weird one, uh, maybe we can change in the uh, error function here. And just say, uh, or let's do it here. Echo change a func. And this is in the erh uh, uh, print help function. And there we can see now this is uh, already part of this main sh uh, file, but it is not part of the program sh. Uh, to make it part of program sh, I would need to, to execute bash boot bump again. Uh, now I don't want to do that. Uh, I just remembered that it's a bad idea to, to modify this uh, particular file and running bash boot bump because that will update this because this is a template script that is always included whatever you don't have to understand or, or know about that stuff uh, because it is uh, a little bit embarrassing uh, whatever <laughs> we do ha ha however uh, need to uh, generate these automatically generated files if you would for instance uh, like to add more command line options Let's uh, do that for just uh, to try how that works. So we could uh, say uh, soink, long option soink, short option said, I guess. And then uh, it can take an argument, maybe uh, a file or whatever. Now, if I run a uh, bash with bump here, if we look in the init. Uh, function we can see that now soink is part of the uh, print help it even have its entry here in the option description but since we haven't added a description for for the command it's uh, left out but at least it's part of the summary here which i think is is nice and it, we can even see it takes an argument and all, remember, all I did was just add it here to the synopsis. It figures out automatically if it needs argument or if you put brackets around it, it's an optional argument and stuff like that. Uh, but the really cool thing is that it have also added it here to the get opt uh, loop here. It's part of this while loop. It's also here and we can see this short option here. Um, and if I would uh, execute bash boot now with the soink option, we will probably get an error because, yeah, it just errors show version and exit. Wonder. Yeah, there we can see unrecognized option uh, soink uh, generate documents because I think. Kind of weird that it say unrecognized option uh, should actually say that the, I think the error is because we never gave it an argument. Um, that is why it uh, borks out a bit there. So if we say bork because it we wanted to to give a soink needed a file argument, you know. No, that didn't work either. Wait now. Ah, I'm executing bash boot. That's the <laughs> we were supposed to execute uh, I with this D with the soink. There and there, there we can see uh, option soink requires an argument. This is my, uh, this is handled automatically by getopt. Uh, getopt is really great at uh, giving you a, a, a par correctly parsing options, and finding errors and stuff like that. But if we would give it an argument, whatever, it works. All we get is now not valid command changing. And change, this was what we added, you know, in the main sh here. So now it's a not a valid command uh, and just a space here, actually, because we uh, last arg is uh, empty. Uh, 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 I guess I should take care of that because uh, this is a bit uh, uh, confusing, not valid command. Uh, maybe we should have do this. Or let's do this and ill if, and then we do if.
target is empty, then ERH, uh, please, or no command. There. Okay, let's try this. Ah, no, target is not. Uh, wait now, is target X then? Yes. Okay. Ah, it's lowercase x, of course, of course. And this should be negated there. Now it should work. No command specified RTFM. We supply a uh, invalid uh, um, direction, like uh, bound. It was a bound, not valid command. But I would say not a valid direction left right up down there bound not a valid i guess bound it is not yeah sometimes i just get lost in this sorry for that uh, and here you can also see uh, how i use this uh, uh, erm uh, just to get a debugging uh, thing here to see what the content of target was and target was lowercase x So let's uh, cycle back here and see what 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 is this target and stuff like that? We enter the main function and when we do we have already parsed the command line options. We have already gotten the last argument uh, And the first thing we do is setting target to be whatever the last argument is if it is not set, it will set target to a capital X here. Uh, and then we test if uh, the option title is set. Then we set a variable called type to title. And do the same thing for title for format, instance, class, win ID, uh, parent. Uh, and you can see it's an if, else if, else if, else if. So it, it will only do one of these, meaning that if you would specify uh, multiple of options here, for example, title and the title format. Title, title format. Uh, now the the type will be title, and we just end this if uh, thing here as soon as it find find one matching thing here, so to speak. Uh, but this is this is kind of a valid thing, but the the this option would not do anything here. Uh, it does this, but if no, none of these options, title, title, format, instance, class, win ID, parent is set, for example, with bound, then it will enter this uh, uh, default uh, clause here and set type to be direction and target. Uh, it makes target lowercase. That is what is comma, comma. It will make whatever uh, the content of the variable target is uh, uh, lowercase, and then it will set it to itself. So it will... Yeah, make it lowercase. Then uh, here, it makes target to be only one character long here with this substring thing, and it starts at the first uh, character. So only the first char only the first character, lowercase, will be the content of target. But this is only the case if uh, the type is direction, which is only the case if none of these uh, command line options are set. And here, this is where it tests now that we actually have a valid uh, direction uh, by testing if target uh, if target is not uh, left, right, up, or down, or just a single character, of course, uh, we'll get this uh, error message. Uh, but if it's um, 
you know, when we, and this is what happens when we execute uh, the command without any options at all, uh, then it will still uh, enter this here and say that the type is direction, if, even if we don't have a direction specified. Uh, and this is also when uh, target have been uh, set to X. But remember, we also lowercase that, so that is why I have to make this test. It's it's so weird. I'm not sure uh, how smart this is uh, now when I think about it, but whatever. Um, all in all, what this does is that it makes sure that we have um, uh, started the command in, in the correct uh, way, so to speak. But if we reach this point, for example, if we would uh, execute it with this, this thing, uh, then it will uh, set the command line option gap. If that is not uh, specified on the command line, it will uh, default make it 5 uh, as the default. This is also something I would like to improve here to make sure that the gap is actually an integer because that's uh, uh, it's very important that I don't pass a string here, which would be possible. Uh, I'm not even sure what happens here if I do gap uh, strong. It kind of worked, I guess, but uh, you could uh, get weird results doing this, I guess. Uh, I wonder wonder how, how it works if we do gap strong down. Yeah, it kind of works, I guess. Uh, so let's not bother with that now, but uh, it can be a good idea to add a comment here. Make sure gap is an integer. Um, wonder, can we do this? Uh, var is equal to strong. And then echo strong zero that's good that's really good uh, and if we do echo strong no ah 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 bar bar zero good and echo bar strong okay so when we put uh, a string in an arithmetic test it will be zero that's good. Uh, and then we can instead test that gap is more than zero if it isn't set it to five. Guess we could do that. Gap is equal to I think this, this would work. Right, uh, when we have done that, uh, we set a variable called result to be the output of uh, this command here. We, we start a subshell and get the output of that subshell basically here. Uh, inside that subshell, we just execute one single command, list visible. This uh, backslashes here uh, means that uh, we just escape the new line. So. In reality, this looks like this without the backslashes, and, and this would actually, actually work uh, because uh, uh, white space between uh, uh, arguments to a command doesn't matter. But it's just one single uh, command here, list visible, and that is that function that we have here, and that function is what starts the awk. So. Uh, what, real, what, what is really going on here is that we capture the output of the awk script into this variable result. Um, and yeah, let's carry on. I will explain, of course, what is happening in the awk, awk part here uh, later, but not now. Then I test if um, 
And here I do a, an arithmetic test. And the reason for that is that uh, when I set my, my uh, options, uh, if the option doesn't take uh, an, um, if the option doesn't take uh, a, a, um, an argument, like for example, gap does. Here we can see if, if gap is the option, then we set the value of that key to dollar two. But many of these options, especially in this script, uh, they don't. Uh, they are. They don't need an uh, uh, argument. Uh, you could think of them as flags. Flags, and then uh, I instead set uh, set the value of these keys to one, uh, meaning I can do arithmetic tests to just see if if uh, that uh, option was present on the command line or not. Uh, with an easy arithmetic test like this, because you see, I don't compare anything. I just put that value here inside uh, double parentheses, meaning that if it's one, this is true. If it's uh, zero, it's false. And zero is the default value. Uh, I actually don't remember exactly what this focus does, or I think I do. Uh, it's, uh, I guess I can specify uh, a window. Uh, let's see, does this work right now? Yeah. There, we can see the instance name for sublime is sublime underscore main. I wonder if I cannot do this. Uh, focus instance sublime underscore main. There, it focuses sublime uh, with this. If I would uh, leave the focus option out, we get the uh, window ID of uh, that window. And if we leave the, the instance name out, since remember I told you that uh, these options actually don't need an argument. And I have written it like this, so, so then you can instead do that. And then it prints a list of all windows uh, and their instance names, uh, or all visible windows, because that is what was important. That is the whole point of this script is to, uh, uh, list and, and figure out what windows are actually visible. It also prints a bunch of this crap here. Uh, so that is the first thing it tests here. If, if I've set the focus flag, that means that we want to, to focus uh, uh, a window. And it also makes sure that uh, the output is only uh, an integer value, like it is here, you know. Uh, Otherwise, it will just exit out here. I think I should rewrite this part a little bit, but it, it works, as you can see. Um, but if the focus option is not set, uh, then it tests if uh, the type is a direction. Uh, if it is, and the type is, an, is a direction, that's a default type, remember? Uh, so for example, if we do focus I don't know why I'm doing this, but down, that's the direction, down, and that means it will reach this part here. If it's true, then it evaluates uh, head one, uh, uh, or it evaluates the first line of the string result. And result is the output of uh, awk, uh, the awk, awk script. And that is actually this whole thing here. Uh, and this, even if it looks like it's two lines, it's actually just one line here. Uh, so what we are doing here is evaluating this line, meaning that uh, this will turn into a part of the bash script, whatever is on that line. It's weird, but that's what's happening. Uh, and as you can see, it is uh, written like it is variables here. So so we can, for example, use these variables in the script when we evaluate that line. I know a lot of people really don't like this method and I think I am <laughs> part of that group myself now, but uh, this is how it is. Um, we might change this in the update, we, I, I will see. Uh, but this is how it works now. And that's the point of this video. Let's not try to fix every single uh, weird part like this in the code. Instead, I want to try to walk you through uh, uh, what's going on.
After we have evaluated the first line, we test if TRG con uh, uh, is equal to floating. And here we can see TRG con, in this case, it would be equal to this number here. Uh, and as you might expect, floating, it will be equal to that if the window would be floating. So for example, here, I agree this with, uh, let's do D instance. No, it is not set to floating here. I'm not sure when it is. Uh, that's a weird thing. We should, I should comment that. <laughs> is it ever floating? Uh, and here is also something weird that if it is floating, uh, then focus either left or right, or if it's up, focus left, or if it's right, focus down, focus right. It's so weird. This, I should really take a look at this because this doesn't seem to work. The floating focusing thing here. Uh, but if it's not uh, set to floating, which it appears to never be, right? Uh, and the type is direction. What it then will do is test that TRG con is not empty. Uh, or it tests if it is empty. If it is not empty, it will not uh, do this thing and it will not do this thing and then just carry on. But if it is empty, then it will increase the gap size and then evaluate the first line of the list visible function again, meaning it will uh, try to, to get a new window, but using a larger gap size. Uh, so it, it makes two guesses if it can, cannot find uh, uh, a window in the direction we want to focus. For example, when I do focus down here, I am in this container, I do focus down, it selects uh, this one because it's below here. It, it's a window uh, visible below closest below the current one. But if for some reason it wouldn't find a window below this one, it would uh, try try again with a larger gap size. And the gap size means that I think, yeah, we started with five, right? So that means we go five pixels below the active window. And if you are using, for example, i3 gaps, uh, then uh, your windows might be so far apart, so it might miss it actually. Uh, and that's why I use this. Uh, it doesn't really happen in my set setup since I don't use gaps or gigantic border sizes, but it is something that is good to have here, I guess. Uh, but after it have done one, it only test tries this once because I, I think I used to have this in a loop. So it tried this uh, for like 10 times uh, at most. And sometimes there are cases when uh, when it uh, doesn't find a window uh, and it's just unnecessary to do this thing uh, over and over again. So it just tries it one time and then it tests again here. Do TRG con have a value? Uh, if it does, it just focus that window. And that is what's happening here, focus down. And TRG con, uh, in this case, would be the container ID of, of the Sublime window. Now we have an else here that belongs to this, this stuff here. Uh, either we have set the focus option or the direction, the type is a direction, or we, we end up here and just print out the result. And that is what's happening here. So when I do, I have this with uh, instance, the focus option is not set, the type is not the uh, uh, direction, the type is instance here because yeah, the option instance is set here. So type is instance, meaning this whole thing will never do that. And then it will just print out uh, the content of the variable result. And that is what we see here. And with that, we can draw the conclusion that the result here is generated by this function list visible and list visible it lives here in the lib directory uh, uh, which is automatically sourced remember in the init uh, sh file which is sourced from the main file here so uh, the list uh, visible function is available for us uh, in, in the main function here 
And this also, by the way, it means that I could also create a new function if I wanted to, like just like this. Uh, in the lib directory, I can create a crazy, crazy frog dot sh, and then we could do um, echo bud labs piglets lolcat. Save this, or I should put it in a function. Uh, crazy frog parenthesis bracket this guy there now we have crazy frog sh here it doesn't matter what i what i name these uh, files it doesn't matter at all i just like to add sh uh, to make uh, make it clear that this is a bash file you know uh, i guess whatever i that's how i do it uh, doesn't matter file extensions doesn't matter in in uh, unix anyway any anywhere so whatever uh, but now i can just use this crazy frog here executing the script again and there we can see it prints the text lolcat was that what we were doing echo bodless ah i forgot to pipe it to lolcat there hey so that's how easy it is to add uh, new functions and uh, with, uh, but still keeping your your main file neat and clean you know and if i would remove this function i just remove this file and it's removed from from the whole script it's not part of program sh here uh, to make it so i have to do a bash boot bump but now when i have done so we can see this uh, crazy frog function should be part of the script here somewhere you can search for it like this. There it is, function crazy frog comes just before the error functions here. I sometimes get a funky uh, no line break here between it. I think it's because uh, I, I didn't add a shebang here, which I often do in these functions. Like that, and then we do bash for pump. You can see in program. Now I have that line break, but it doesn't include uh, the shebang because that would just be uh, unnecessary and, and look very ugly to include the shebangs here in the uh, program sh file. So I, that's one thing you can do with this bash uh, thing. Um, yeah, that just enters that, whatever. I don't even remember where I do this, where I remove the, the, the shebangs. Uh, 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 or it is here, I guess. I have a cat and then the V option. It is almost like grep V, you know, uh, so I can remove all lines that starts with, uh, uh, yeah, starts with shebang. <laughs> that is what that does here, uh, whatever. Or I guess here is where it does that because here it only cats the main sh file, then it cats uh, the a file called help, and then it cats all files in lib, so lib dash star. Such a weird thing. I I never think about this even, but I actually wrote this stupid little language and stuff here. What a waste of time! But I did it, and I use it every day. So I guess maybe it wasn't a waste of time. Uh, okay, we made a crazy frog frog function. Cool, cool. You're a bash wizard, bud. I know, I know. Delete this file. Okay, list visible. So this little function generates all of this stuff here. How is it possible? It looks impossible. Let's go back to the main function, because I forgot something. The top of the main function, we de declare a global variable. I'm not sure why I do this, because I almost never do this, declare g, but here I did that, and that means this is a global variable called underscore json, but we don't give that va uh, variable a value. I think I did it like this, so, so that I could hard code uh, a value for this underscore JSON in the script. I remember that was useful uh, when developing. Uh, 
because in list visible later we test here if uh, underscore json if that is not set then we will give it the value of the option json so the long option json uh, it takes an argument and that argument must be a json string i don't make any tests here uh, i guess maybe in a way i should but whatever uh, test that it actually is a json string but that is kind of uh, difficult uh, a difficult regular expression maybe there is like uh, one that i could just download but whatever if the long option uh, json is set and have a, a, a json string as the argument then it will use that for 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 the value of the underscore json variable here but if none of these are set, neither the underscore JSON or the option JSON, then uh, we will OR this test here uh, and give underscore JSON the value of the output uh, uh, of the command i3 message dash t get tree. And that's an insane command I have shown you many times. It prints uh, a JSON string uh, with everything about the current i3 session this this string here it contains everything literally everything that's going on in the i3 uh, session we have open at the moment uh, it have uh, all of all windows uh, even windows on the scratch pad all workspaces all monitors uh, connected uh, and used or active at least uh, all bars, uh, everything, literally everything about the current i3 session is in this JSON string. And notice how I'm saying string, because this is one single string. It's almost no white spaces whatsoever, because it's a, a kind of a minified uh, JSON also. And it is like impossible to read this uh, without getting a headache. Uh, if you want to read it, uh, for, for one reason or another, then you can just pipe this uh, JSON into JQ without any options to JQ, and then you will get a really nice, uh, even syntax highlighted here in the terminal uh, JSON representation. So this is the exact same string, but now it's formatted with uh, JQ, so we, you can actually make sense of this. Uh, but as you can see, I don't pipe it to JQ or anything here, I just get the raw JSON string. Uh, and then I use that as the input here, this triple uh, uh, brackets, meaning the content of this string will be the input of this command. Because again, here we have uh, backslashes, meaning uh, these three lines is actually just one single line. Uh, so awk will parse this string. Uh, and it will do that with the... Uh, uh, file that is created uh, temporarily here kind of uh, by the output of awklib another function here uh, and we also pass some options into awk here we we use colon as a field separator comma as a, a, a record separator and then we say set a variable called operet to dollar one and dollar one here it's a dollar one uh, pass to the list visible function the first argument. Gepsis is the second argument and Beer is the uh, third argument. And if we quickly look in the main function we can see that every time we execute this uh, uh, list visible we, we pass it the type, the gap and the target. Those are $1, and $3 here. I don't know why but uh, I guess I should also rename these variables so they match uh, those variables. This, this looks really confusing to me. Uh, right now okay uh, uh, um, I guess it's time now to look at the awk uh, because awklib as we have mentioned I think maybe even two times now is just a function that prints a uh, 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 automatically generated awk script but it's the only automatically generating thing here is that it concatenates all the files in uh, the awklib directory. Uh, and that might look like a weird thing to do, but actually this 
it's so much more convenient to work with awk when you have them in separate files here instead of uh, editing awk inside bash inside a spring which you normally do you know it it gets like here the, we are now now inside uh, a single quote string inside bash in a way you know that's that's just a weird thing to do <laughs> And I don't like to do that. Uh, one reason, one of the main reasons actually, is that when I do it like this uh, and even give it the awk extension and have a, a awk language pack installed in the editor, I can toggle comments, for example. You cannot do that in a single, single quote string inside the bash and things like that. And you can also get syntax highlighting. Now, you know me, I'm a weird guy. I, I disable all syntax highlighting, but if I would have a, 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 a theme, different color color theme we could see that uh, this this uh, file has a lot more syntax highlighting for example you can get things like that which you could never get uh, wh when it's written in a string and here we can see this is why I don't like uh, color schemes why are strings green and that gets really annoying when you are writing awk for example and stuff like that who wants syntax highlighting what's wrong with people there we got it mondo just white and blue. Uh, so let's not talk more about this awklib function. It's just automatically generated. Instead, we look at these, these files here. Maybe this is a good time to make a break uh, in this little series. We're already an hour here. I think I, the, I think it's uh, the, this went uh, went okay. Um, a lot of stuff was covered and now uh, we can just 100% more or less focus on uh, awk and parsing this JSON and stuff like that because that is actually what I really want to, to, to get into and then we, get, we, we have one whole uh, video just dedicated to that we don't need to cycle back to this bashboard stuff and things like that but I really wanted to show you uh, my workflow on this and it is very similar on all of these uh, in the i3as uh, dev uh, uh, um, organization here you can look at the other uh, uh, i3as as, as well here for example i3 run and i think i mentioned it but i3 viswis is a weird example since it is based on awk uh, i3 run here for example it doesn't have any awk files whatsoever it just have a normal lib directory with a couple of, of uh, bash scripts but it works just the same here that these are um, uh, um, sourced in that automatically generated init file which in turn is sourced from the main uh, sh file here and stuff like that so it's more or less the same workflow i haven't shown you the watch uh, thing here which is something i, I started using um, while working on the last uh, update I, I think or maybe the one before that because the watch watch uh, script it automatically executes bash boot bump and test the code every time you make a change and stuff like that and I have found that that is uh, really nice to be able to do so but whatever you can probably figure it out or else I will probably show it in maybe the next maybe the video after that because I haven't really decided now if I will just show you uh, in the next video, I will, we will keep on doing what we did now. Try to figure out everything about this i3 viswis, how it works. Uh, but then I thought I could also continue here because I am actually working on i3 viswis. And why not just make that make videos of that, uh, that process as well? When we fix all these things that I cringe about when I <laughs> go through the code now. Um, uh, um, yeah. It will be fun, fun stuff. But till then, I wish you a great day. Thank you for watching. Bye.